Bit of a slower day today for the Vancouver Canucks news scene, but we did have ourselves a podcast with Elliot Friedman published on 32 Thoughts that I thought had some pretty interesting notes and pieces of info for the Vancouver Canucks. So I'll leave a link in the description to the latest episode of 32 Thoughts, How Did We Get Here and Where Are We Going?, and what I also leave a link in the description to is this post made by Electric Nux on the R Canuck sub. Because what Nux goes out there and does is he summarizes some of these things that Friedman says. It relates to Vancouver, it relates to the playoffs, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to dive into the options. So, the title of the post that is on here says that Elliot Friedman thinks the Vancouver Canucks will play Game 1 on Tuesday, April 23rd. Now, just taking a quick look over to my calendar here, the 23rd is just over a week from now on Tuesday. The Canucks are playing this upcoming Tuesday against the Calgary Flames, and then they're finishing off their regular season on Thursday against the Jets. So if you assume the 23rd start date for the playoffs, the Canucks will have one, two, three, four days of rest between the end of the regular season and game one of the postseason. Now, this actually fits really well, in my opinion, because we had some word from different NHL sources talking about how the league has moved up their playoff start time from the 22nd over to the 20th. And look, if the Canucks had only one day's worth of a break between the end of the regular season and the start of the playoffs, I think that would be a little bit too brash, a little bit too rushed. So giving the Canucks a few extra days there does help especially since the Canucks do open up the Stanley Cup playoffs at home. They had already clinched home ice advantage a while ago, so whether or not their opponents are Nashville or Vegas or LA, that remains to be seen, but as of right now, it seems like it's going to be Nashville. Really depends. I also did see some people talking about the other Western Conference teams and their start times. For example, the Edmonton Oilers, as we've been knowing this entire season, they've had so many fewer games played than Vancouver for the majority of the year, so this is the time where Edmonton has to play catch-up. They're playing a ton of games, they played Arizona and then Vancouver, and now they're playing San Jose, so they are going to be pretty tight up until the end of the season and then the postseason starts too. If the Oilers get that early start time sometime around the 20th, if it is 4.20 when they begin their postseason rush, then that'd be a lot of games. Like, the Oilers could be absolutely jam-packed to the brim with hockey action. But, of course, you know, league practicality has to set itself in. There are a few concerts and stuff I think I saw that interfere with some of these dates, but either way, the Canucks have themselves their final game of the season on the 18th. We'll see what happens when they begin, whether or not they do start on the 23rd or not. But this also did bring itself up in the conversation as well. Friedman also goes out there and says this. Our possible opponents are Vegas and LA. They finish the season on the 18th alongside of Vancouver. Meanwhile, the Nashville Predators are playing their last game of the season tonight on Monday. If you head over to the Predators and their entire schedule, hey, guess what? The Nashville Predators are playing the Penguins. This will be their last game of the season, and that is pretty significant because if you assume that Vancouver plays off against Nashville to start out Game 1 of the Stanley Cup playoffs, if this takes place on Tuesday, April 23rd, it would mean that the Nashville Predators would have about eight days worth of rest? And look, the Canucks playoffs are probably going to start at 7 p.m. PST because they're here. Nashville, playing this game against the Pittsburgh Penguins today, it's at 4 p.m. They'd have an entire night's worth of rest Monday night and then an entire week's worth of rest afterwards. If you assume that the Preds and Penguins game will end today at around 7 and then you go over to one week later and the Canucks game against Nashville would start at 7, then doesn't that add like an extra 24 hours-ish period of rest time for the Predators? I don't know, I think I'm kind of tripping here, but that would be a lot of break time. So for the Vancouver Canucks to end off their season on Thursday the 18th and seeing Nashville end their season three, four days earlier, it does give Vancouver an advantage if they do play against Nashville. Of course, the Kings and the Golden Knights, they're ending their seasons off on Thursday the 18th as well. So if the Canucks end up playing them, then the entire, oh, games played, rest days argument, it doesn't really matter anymore. So I think this just gives even more fuel for Vancouver Canucks fans to hope that Nashville is the team that the Canucks end up playing off in round one, because that would be the best case scenario. From an on-ice perspective, in terms of the 
play styles in terms of how Vancouver performs against Nashville. You see that they can lose against Vegas. They can lose against LA. They very much can. So against Nashville, this is the only team out of the bunch that the Canucks have had significant success against. So with all the advantages combined, it makes sense, especially since they might have themselves a lot of extra time off before playing in game one. Cold Nashville versus a Vancouver team that is well rested. That's a pretty good argument. Friedman also goes out there and says that the Jets and Avs will start their series on Monday the 22nd, so that also feeds into the idea that some of these playoff series may begin a little bit earlier. If it is the 20th that everything kicks off, then okay, the Canucks might have a little bit of a break, but Nashville and Colorado, a matchup that we had already had a sneak preview of a few days ago, that appears to be starting sometime earlier than the Vancouver series. We also had ourselves another comment made by Friedman here. He also said, if Elias Lindholm looks as good as he did on Saturday, I look at them down the middle, the Canucks are going to be a hard team to beat. And that also is something that I wanted to give some props to as well, because as we did talk about in the Canucks and Oilers postgame video from two days ago, Elias Lindholm might have played his best game as a Vancouver Canuck against the Oilers and against Leon Dreisaitl. He shut Dreisaitl down the entire night. Just back-checking, stealing pucks, blocking passes, and giving Dreisaitl a really difficult time when Dreisaitl didn't have the puck. He was so good, and I think this is the kind of stability the Canucks were looking for when they made that trade in the first place. Andre Kuzmenko is lighting the world on fire right now. He is so good for Calgary alongside of Nazem Kadri. I think they just posted up the best point production out of a duo in the NHL the past week, something crazy like that. Of course, though, Calgary isn't in the playoffs, so they're not really going to reap many benefits from that in the short term. But... Elias Lindholm, while he is no Andre Kuzmenko scoring points like crazy right now, he has been doing some very good defensively minded things. His stability, his presence allows the other guys on the team to bolster their offense and focus more so on putting the puck in the opposing team's net rather than shutting down opposing top centers and making their lives difficult. This is making me think about the Montreal Canadiens from a few years ago. When the Habs made the Stanley Cup final, their top line of Deneau, Gallagher, Tatar, they didn't produce any points. But they were the top line for a reason. They shut down opposing teams' top lines, and in particular Mark Stone, very, very well. That seemed to have been a clinic of defensively-minded hockey in Elias Lindholm. While I'm not saying that he is pretty much equivalent to an entire line in Montreal, I am saying that his presence is a lot better appreciated now than it was, let's say, a few weeks ago. So... Friedman's got a point. If Lindholm can continue playing as well as he did against Edmonton, then it's going to be very good for Vancouver. Unit 731 Survivor goes out there and says, yeah, Lindholm played so well defensively against Leon. Also, having him play a shutdown role on other teams' top lines means Miller doesn't have to. That's pretty substantial over the course of a series. I think Lindholm is going to have a huge playoffs. He also said that he wants to change the narrative that he struggled here, and he wants to be good in the playoffs because he wants to win and he's already looked good since coming back from the injury. Finally, there are a few extra comments here on the Canucks thread. Oh yeah, like I just want to know when the dates are, we gotta know so we can plan our schedules and everything. It is nice because, you know, Canucks fans, we haven't really had to do this in a decade. Last time the Canucks had playoff action, it was COVID. Everybody was at home, everybody could watch the games, nobody had any vacationing to do. Nobody was going outside, so it was a lot easier to watch Canucks games back in that time frame, but now it's like, yeah, the world's opened up, people are going on trips, people are doing things, people are visiting others, so we need to start thinking, yeah, okay, we need to get the playoff schedule, so I can schedule my own week, and plan stuff around the Canucks playoffs, because either I want to go to the game, or either I want to stay home, stuff like that, like, this is a lot different than the 2020 bubble. This is the first playoff action Vancouver is actually seeing in their home arena in 10 years. Technically nine years, but 10 years sounds more substantial. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about these comments made by Elliot Friedman in regards to the Canucks starting out their 2024 playoffs either on the 23rd next week and what their opponents could look like. Because Nashville, I'd say that is the most primary target for Vancouver fans now, especially considering they're finishing off their regular season today. So thoughts in the comment section about the Vancouver Canucks and the upcoming 2024 Stanley Cup playoffs. I hope you enjoyed this video. Shout out to 9 And bye.